You're now watching the Danny Mac Podcast on the Bet Rivers Network. Welcome back to the Danny Mac Podcast on the Bet Rivers Podcast Network. Glad you're here. Thank you for listening. And whether you do it via Spotify, Apple, maybe you just push play off of my Facebook page or my Twitter X account, whatever. You can watch these interviews, you know, whether it's Scott Mitchell or Eric Kramer, pick a former Detroit Lion, won't be talking to many of those, in, but you can watch them if you subscribe on YouTube. I want to strongly encourage you to do that. Championship Sunday lived up to its expectations. Two different games very much. One, a defensive slugfest in Baltimore. The Ravens coming up short against Patrick Mahomes and the Chiefs. Kind of saw that one come and didn't bet it because I have a friend who's very well linked to the Ravens organization. And for his joy and prosperity, I was rooting for the Ravens, not about Mahomes. And the nightcap, if you heard me last week or any time during the football season, you know I was rooting for the Detroit Lions. And that's why I'm wearing my Honolulu blue today. Those of you who are watching on YouTube know that to be the case. Ten takeaways from Championship Sunday. Number one. Rare air. That's where Mahomes has gone. You can start talking about this guy now among the all-time greats who've ever played the position. And if you're going to roll your eyes, I want to throw a few names at you. Tom Brady, Michael Jordan, Wayne Gretzky, Tiger Woods. What do those guys have in common that when they needed to score, when they needed to grind it out, when they needed to dig deep and find a way to win the most meaningful games, they did. And they did it over and over and over on the biggest stages. Mahomes is 28 years old, man. He's the type of dude who in his 20s would make me feel somewhat secure. I can commit a half a billion dollars to. Not many guys do that. If you're sick of Mahomes, examine maybe why that's the case and ask yourself, is it because success of others is my enemy? I don't know. Just a thought. Number two, going for it on fourth down repeatedly deserves all it gets. I know there is a new way of thinking these last 10 years in the NFL, and we could thank Doug Peterson, who's Eagles won a Super Bowl by being gamblers several years ago when Nick Foles was their quarterback and thus had a statue built in his honor outside the ballpark, the link. It doesn't work as much as people thought it did. And what what people fail to take into account when looking at the numbers, that Eagles team going for it on fourth down instead of kicking a field goal or punting, going for two when you really have no reason to do so. They had one of the best offensive lines in NFL history. And Detroit Lions have the best line in the league right now, but that doesn't take into account the 40% of the time it doesn't work in fourth and two, if that's the metric. I don't know what it is. But if the result of it going in the loss column is your dick gets cut off, best not to do it. Dan Campbell, I love him, but that was asinine. Kick a 47 or 48-yard field goal or punt if need be. Number three, Tony Romo has been exposed. Man, oh, man, I have seen an enormous turn in the way America is receiving the number one analyst on CBS. What people are seeing now, and I was, you know, I hate to be, I told you so, guy, you know that about me, but uh, I was on the ground floor of this. He is enthusiastic, yes, and he can predict plays because he watches enough tape, and most quarterbacks who do watch tape can tell you what tendencies are pretty consistently. America seemed to be wowed by that because he would forecast it consistently. That became part of his shtick, and he was good at it. But what he's not good at is preparation. Uh, Spags, other than Chris Jones and Spags, the defensive coordinator, Steve Spagnola, does Tony Romo know Justin Reed of the chief secondary? Is he aware of George Karloftis, the second-year edge guy from Purdue? He doesn't do his homework. He doesn't know defense. He gets confused at times. He struggles to make speech. The 
Word is changing on Tony Romo. People are coming around to my way of thinking on him. I'll get to Greg Olson in just a little bit. That's not item number four. Number four is Brock Purdy. Stop saying he's a systems quarterback, please. Yes, he has great talent around him. They protect him pretty well. Christian McCaffrey is going to wind up being the NFL's offensive MVP this year because they only give the MVP to um, quarterbacks. That's a, that's a law. That's a commandment in this year NFL. He may be deserving of it, but uh, he or Tyreek Hill or anyone else, they're really, really tough for guys who aren't throwers to get that award. Purdy is terrific, and he ran very well yesterday. Even Greg Olson did a did a 180 on the athleticism. You're not the world's greatest athlete. Then he busts off a 23-yarder two rushes later. He doesn't run it a lot, but he ran it really effectively yesterday. And uh, he makes good decisions more often than not. He throws a wobbly ball once in a while. He ain't perfect, but he ain't a system quarterback either. Stop calling him that and give the young man credit. Mr. Irrelevant has arrived, and he's going to the big dance. Tight end play is the best it has ever been. Man, all of them Sunday were absolutely magnificent. Sam Laporta, the first-year player, the offensive rookie of the year, nine catches, almost 100 yards for the Lions, and he hasn't been 100% for a month with a terrible ankle injury or foot injury. George Kittle of the Niners only was targeted three times, but did you see the isolation, the replay they showed when he pancaked Aiden Hutchinson? That's how you do it. That's how a Y tight end, the traditional next to the tackle, I can run block two tight end, plays at the high level. Kittle obviously learned this at Iowa. Iowa, Big Ten, Midwestern, hit the blocking sled. There's Coach Hedges blowing the whistle on 41st Street. Dig, 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 dig. Get the guy's shoulders turned and put him on his ass. Tight end play is amazing in this league. Did I mention Travis Kelsey played? Sunday, God, he's good. He's uh, he's starting to carve out his name among the all-time greats, and if you don't like him, that's your problem. As a player, he's really effing good. And uh, the Ravens have a tight end, too. You just didn't see much of him. Mark Andrews, uh, he's pretty good, too. And those were the four tight ends who played Sunday on Championship Sunday. Four of the best in the game today. Uh, and there's a bunch of really, really good ones. Isaiah Pacheco, number six here on my list of top 10 takeaways. Isaiah Pacheco is my favorite angry runner in the NFL today. Now, you might say, why are you going to talk about the running game when he averaged 2.8 yards per carry? He had 24 carries, and the Chiefs won the time of possession, and that's what I love about Andy Reid. When the weather gets cold and you are playing to win championships, Andy in the last five or six years, consistently has been willing to be something other than the smartest guy in the world and the world's greatest play caller. He is that. You know, one of the reasons why is because he's content to dummy it up and play the game in the mud. He didn't used to be like that. I'll take 2.8 yards per carry if there are 24 of them every freaking Sunday. It gives my defense a chance to rest and catch its breath and go out there and kick ass. And that's what the Chiefs defense did. They got good pressure on Lamar Jackson. That comes from a defense that can catch its breath because on the other side, the offense is taking care of business, and it's not just by throwing the ball. It's not just Mahomes and Kelsey. Huge, huge love for number 10, Isaiah Pacheco. Greg Olson, the former Bears tight end, is a very good young analyst, very good for so early in his career. He could use a cup of decaf, and this is coming from me, and I think part of me is bugged by how loud they pump up the natural sound on the parabolic mics. They're not pinning the meters, but, geez, back it off just a little bit. We get it. The crowd is on its feet. You don't have to turn it up to 11 if you've seen that movie you know exactly what i'm talking about olsen is really really good and he understands the nuances of the game he has a knack for explaining those he's articulate though sometimes verbose again coming from me 
But what I like about him is he gives credit to guys who some analysts don't even know their names, and he, he can isolate on them, and he can pick out something they did before you go to the replay. Greg is really, really good at what he does. However, I think he is being, and he was praised, he was lauded all over social media Sunday for some of the biggest names in media criticism, Richard Deitch and others, Bill Simmons, talking about how this guy does it, how it's supposed to be done. He's very, very good. I'm happy for him. But here's the problem. He's more noticeable. His goodness is more noticeable because we get so much badness on Sunday. So many guys who really don't have much to bring to the table. And I'm talking about the Mark Sanchez's of the world. Charles Davis is a very pleasant dude, but the guy who sits next to Iron Eagle is is not very opinionated and he's not very funny. He he does his job, but he doesn't bring anybody in who otherwise wouldn't be there for the football. And I think that's something that has missed in general. That was an asset Romo had that now is meaning less and less to him because he doesn't have the preparation he needs to have to go with it. But Olsen is getting rave reviews. Uh, There's talk that that's probably his last game with Kevin Burkhart because Tom Brady is coming to Fox next year. Burkhart's another story, and I could do an entire podcast, an entire show on uh, on the broadcasters in this year's NFL, but uh, I'll ask Adam Delavid. It's that something that's in the cards. But Burkhart yesterday said uh, he had something about Barry Sanders being a part of the 83 Lions playoff team. And then he said, oh, no, if I said Barry Sanders, I meant Barry Sims. Actually, you meant Billy Sims, not Barry Sanders or Barry Sims. Nonetheless, Kevin Burkhart, uh, I'd rather hear him and Olsen do the Super Bowl, but I don't get a vote in this matter. So I'll have to deal with what I'm getting. And I, I will. I'll be just fine. The Lions are going to be good for a few years. That much is certain. I think they drafted very well last year. you got to feel great about where they are with their running game. Montgomery now five years in. Gibbs, the first-year player, had a terrific year. The offensive line was great. The tight end is going to be one of the greats in the game's history, potentially. Amon Ross St. Brown is a terrific player. Maybe they get a little bit more help at wide out. Jamison Williams, pretty good. They need as more another splashier player on defense to help Hutchinson out. If they could do that, maybe get a ball hawking safety. Um, they need to make more splash plays. They they rose to the occasion this postseason. Um, and I question whether they would. They did, just not enough. And not enough stops yesterday or Sunday in the uh in the second half to make a defense. Uh, to make a difference. Number nine is defense. Defense and running still win championships. Yeah, they do. The Chiefs the Chiefs largely are a Super Bowl team this year because of their defense. Everything I said about Mahomes, I believe, but when they're not scoring a lot of points and their defense is keeping him in it, I count on that guy. That guy's going to win me the game. He does it. He wins two playoff games every year, two or more every year. That's what he does, more than any player in history now. <laughs> More than any player in history, and he's 28. But the the whacking, the whacking the uh, the Niners gave to the Detroit offense when it had the ball in the second half Sunday night was was a big part of the reason they're advancing. Man, Fred Warner is a bitch, and so is Nick Bosa, and uh, their secondary will bring it. Jimmy Ward at L. Those guys can play. They surprised me how they got pushed around in the second half. And again, that's evidence the running game can be okay. They didn't need Jared Goff to get out to that big lead 24-7 at the half. They piss away a 17-point lead on Sunday night. And it's because they stopped running the ball effectively and the Niners did run the ball effectively. And Christian McCaffrey winning the offensive player of the year cements that, that running the ball still can win you championships. Lastly, but not leastly, my 10 takeaways. And this is another item I could do an entire show on. Maybe they will let me do that. There seems to be a growing disdain for the presence of global superstar Taylor Swift In case you haven't heard, she's dating Chiefs tight end Travis Kelsey, and she likes to go to Chiefs games, and she sits in the skybox. She has to have security. She's a global superstar, and Taylor Swift is selling records 
and packing arenas all over the world. And a lot of America just won't have it. They are furious about her presence at these games. Look at the Toxic Wasteland on Twitter or on Facebook. I don't do the other social media. Uh, Two is ample, I promise you. But I find so many guys, and women too, to my surprise, just appalled by her presence. And I wonder why they're bothered. And I wonder if when I was a younger man, would I stomp up and down and say, stop showing her? And Because my attitudes have changed a lot over the years. I'd like to think I wouldn't have, but I don't know. I'm saying I'm open-minded to it, that maybe I was was more of an old man yells at cloud when I was younger than older. I I don't know. Maybe I'm doing that oppo. (laughs) The curious case of Benjamin Button, only the attitude edition, because I've not gotten better looking. Or have I? Still got my hair. Here's a tip for you. You can be okay with it if you want to be. If you think about this, when Taylor Swift is shown for the first time in the 58th edition of the Super Bowl, You can choose not to let it aggravate you. Think about it. It's not that hard. There's Taylor Swift. She's jumping up and down. Travis Kelsey just caught a touchdown pass and the Chiefs are leading. I'm okay with that. Now, was that hard? I don't mean to take this into the news pages because I don't like it when politics or political leans health care, climate change become a part of conversation in sports radio. I think it's best to leave things in the toy department, but I can't help but note this. I recently heard a news report. There's a trial going on in Michigan. Uh, The parents, the mother uh, of a 15-year-old who two years ago killed not only himself, but he was the shooter in uh, in a school shooting. And I heard the phrase, a Michigan state record number of slayings. The We're keeping records now on the number of people who perished in school slayings. And we're wringing hands over a music star being fond of her boyfriend's football success. Drive me off that picture, please. Thank you for listening to the Danny Mac Podcast. Lots more to go this week. My guy Randy Merkin is is combing the bushes for interesting guests from Seattle to Miami to talk about the NFL, and I'll keep you covered on all Bears news and maybe even do a little White Sox and Cubs conversation this week because the bag is bursting, lots to say. KC Wolf of Northwest Indiana, that's Sam Michael, my executive producer. Adam Delavid is the big boss man for Bet Rivers Podcast Network. And also want to thank Alex Pastor and Troy Mocker for everything they do. Lots more around the corner. Thank you for listening to me. I'm Dan McNeil with the Danny Mac Podcast.